Thank you, Bridget. And thank you, Asia Society and Bridget Bray, for all their work on WeChat. I was thrilled when I heard that the show would come here. I'm familiar with this museum and its uh, prestigious reputation in the United States, and it meant a great deal to me that a show that I've worked on and care about a lot was winding up here in Houston. Um, I should just explain that I've been traveling back and forth to China for numerous years, and my first exposure to Chinese contemporary art was familiarity with the older generation of Chinese artists, the artists who emerged in the 1990s, like Zhang Zhaogang, Sai Kuo Chang, Zhang Wan, and I was very familiar with their work. About six years ago, I began noticing a new generation coming up who looked at art in very different ways. This new generation was born after 1976 and the end of the Cultural Revolution. They had no experience with the old repressive China that the older generation of artists were so reacting to. Also, many of them were products of the one-child policy, and all of them had grown up with the benefits of the open-door policy of new influences coming into China, international companies coming into China, international art coming into China. And finally, I think one of the greatest impact on their lives was the emergence of the internet, which even with censorship in China of the internet, there was no way to stop the flood of information that came into these young artists' lives due to their ability to just get online and surf the Art Forum website, the Museum of Modern Arts website. So they got to see a whole wide range of international influences from a very young age. I began doing numerous studio visits and interviewing these artists, and several shows have come out of that research. Um, with WeChat, one of the things I wanted to look at specifically was how different these artists dealt with the issue of Chinese identity. If I didn't tell you that it was a show of Chinese young artists, many of them you would not assume came from China. Some of them, like Sun Shun or Shi Jiying, is using ink painting, so that might be a tip off to you. Or in some of the videos, the faces are Chinese, so that may be a tip to you. But many of them are looking at the issue of identity and rebelling against Chinese stereotypes. They're not using dragons, they're not using Maos, they're not using pagodas, they're not using references to the Cultural Revolution. They are very much looking at the issue of identity as it is formed in the 21st century. So one of the artists that I definitely knew I wanted for this show was Pixie Liao, who I knew from exhibitions in New York. <laughs> Pixie was very interesting to me because one of the things I noticed with this younger generation that many of them spoke to me about was the pressures on them to get married and have a child as soon as possible coming from their family. In fact, the artists I met who were in their 30s talked about how much their family deals with them as failures if they haven't produced a child. This is part of the product of the one-child policy where two sets of grandparents are going to have one child. This has recently changed that now there's a two-child policy, but still the pressure is on to provide that one child for the greater family as soon as possible. This has made a resurgence of traditional gender roles, where young women are very interested in meeting someone to get married at a really young age, and you see that stereotypical relationships of man to woman are reemerging, where it's very important that the man has a good salary, can buy a house, can buy a car, and the woman is much more in the role of can she provide a good child? So Pixie, I felt like, is working in New York with the freedom that that affords her and is looking at gender relationships in a much more experimental way. In fact, she calls her series Experimental Relationships. So I was curious about what were her influences and how she came to be living in New York and how she views relationships in China 
And those are some of the things I'm going to ask her about today. So to start, I just wanted to ask you to describe a little bit where you grew up in China and what influenced you to decide to become an artist. Um, I grew up in Shanghai, China, which is a very big city, like in New York in China. Um, and I think I decided to become an artist. It's a very step-by-step -step, uh, change in my life. In the beginning, I think, maybe from my elementary school to my college time, um, my life path was to, to make sure I'm trained to be a good office lady to get a good job in the office. And when I graduated from college, um, I, I wasn't interested in my major, so I taught myself how to do graphic design, and I started to um, become a graphic designer at a big company. And then very soon I realized I really cannot stand working in the office from nine to five. So I decided to become a freelancer graphic designer. And then I worked for a couple of years, and I, I realized I cannot stand working for other people as a graphic designer because the client always have the final control of my creativity. So I feel like I'm, I'm now having the freedom to do things in the way that I wanted. So I was just thinking maybe I should change my, my career. And I was uh, watching some film called... Um, uh, blow up. It's like a film from the 60s and um, the main character is a f fashion photographer and I would just think that's a great job you know uh, nobody can tell you how to take a picture because you're holding a camera so they can already say you want this thing bigger or this one smaller so I think maybe I can just become a photographer. So I just uh, decided to go abroad and study photography Unfortunately for me, um, I got accepted to University of Memphis at a time, and then I came to U.S. and I start to learn photography and start to photograph. And when I was in Memphis, I I found my current partner, Mauro, and I started to do this project called Experimental Relationship, like about when I was about to graduate. And at that time, I, f I finally feel like I'm. I'm really doing something that I'm interested in. So I feel like I found my own project. I started to get really into in this project and then I just kept doing it and then I you know, become an artist today. So it wasn't planned at all. I was supposed to be working in the office. What was the difference between going to school here in the US and going to school in China? When I was in China, I never enjoyed school, but I was um, pretty good as a student to get high scores. So um, I never had uh, the freedom to choose what I want to learn. I, I'm interested in art when I was very little. But my parents were telling me, you shouldn't study art because you will end up um, weeping the street. So they want me to have um, study math and you know, science you know, so I have a very stable job in the future. And when I came to US, that was my first time in life that I actually can study something I'm interested in. So I was like spending so much time and taking extra credit just to learn whatever I can learn that I'm interested in. Why did you decide to stay in the United States? I think I'm, I was, I think maybe because the uh, China's open door policy so when I was in, I would say, high school, and they're starting to have this kind of, um, you can go to black market to find the Western music. You know, you can buy CDs that come from the custom house. It was like, have a chainsaw cut to the CD, but you can still play it. So at the time, I was really influenced by the, by the Western culture. I was really interested in it. And, you know, a lot of bands I was listening to from the US. And, so I think the kind of um, make me really like American culture. And also, um, uh, in the beginning, I was thinking about going to German to study. But um, German is very hard for me to learn as a language. So I, I decided to come to US. 
You know, it's really interesting what you're saying about the black market CD store because when I first went to Germany, went to China in 2004, I thought because of censorship, Chinese people knew nothing about what was going on in the United States. And I kept asking questions about censorship and censorship. And finally, my friend got sick of me and she said, I'm going to take you somewhere. And she took me to a black market DVD <laughs> store. And every single American movie, The Sopranos was there. Every TV show right. was there. It was clear that there was nothing that people were not getting one way or the other. Yeah, I think um, in the late 90s and early 2000s, it's probably a very good time for young people because if you have your, your you have the right friends, they will take you to the you know black market. You can be exposed to foreign music and you know, foreign films, but it also it's not open and it was illegal. So depending on which city you are in. I was in Shanghai, so there is a big market for it. But if you're like in more rural cities in China, you probably would never see these kind of things. And that was even before the internet coming to China. Why did you decide to stay in the United States? Why didn't you go back to China after your education? Um, I think I decided to stay here mainly because my partner, because he's Japanese and I'm a Chinese. I just think it's not fair for any of us to live in the other people's home country because we cannot speak um, each other's language. So I think living in the US could be more fair to, to us. But were there things about being an artist in the US that you found more favorable than oh, being an artist oh, in yeah, China? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's the other thing. Um, because I was educated in the US, so I don't think I'm connected to the Chinese art world very much. And also, I find my impression um, like in, in China right now, the art is booming, but it's basically it's about commercial art. So the, being an artist, you can be very successful, but you have to be commercial. You have to go to galleries. But in the US, there are so many like nonprofit um, support for artists like like Asian Society, you know, like um, Photo Fest, I was here. And you know, so many great art organizations that can support artists. So I think that can, that fits me better, that I, this kind of support, I, it's very hard to find in, in China. So do you view the Chinese art scene as too commercial? Yeah, I think so. It is too commercial for me. Um, I'm also curious, how do you feel the one child policy affected you? I think on the one hand, it's a very good thing. I think we, we are probably a very lucky generation because we are not influenced by the cultural revolution. Um, and even, even, the, even though I'm a female, I'm a I'm daughter, but I don't feel like I'm giving any less support from the family. Um, Eaten because there's just no other option for them as <laughs> my little kid. But on the other hand, I think there's a lot of pressure on a single child. Like I'm, I'm like um, the only one that have to take care of them when they get older or when they want a family, want to like you know grandkids. You know they will keep asking me for it even though I'm not giving them. <laughs> yeah, and they must be thing. very sad that you're living in the United States. Um. I think they're in. They're kind of fighting with themselves because they, on the one hand, they really want to support me. They want to give me the best future that they can offer me. But on the other hand, I think they they start to worry as they get older because I'm the only kid and you know I'm not there and they feel very lonely. So I think this is some kind of struggle that we are facing as a one child you know, the only child in the family. When you're making your art here, do you think about China at all? Do you think of yourself as having a Chinese identity? Um, I, don't, I don't think myself as a Chinese artist, but, but I'm, no, I'm, I think of myself as a Chinese artist, but when I make my work, I'm not really constantly thinking about my Chinese heritage. Um, but I think my work is the result of my experience as growing up in China as a female. 
So I think um, I am a Chinese artist, but at the same time, I'm not really um, purposefully making connection to Chinese heritage. Talk a little bit about that, what you were saying about growing up female in China. How does that relate to your work? Um, I think when I was in China, and I went, when, especially when I was a um, teenager, I really rejected my female identity. I, I was um, refused to wear a dress because I, I just think, you know, I just don't like being female. I don't want to... I don't like how female is portrayed in China, but I didn't realize that until now. And I just um, really acting as a boy, and you know, all my friends are boys, and I, I like to play with them, with the, like the boys' games. Um, and I also there are so many, and I and I as I go get, get get older, and I start to dating, and there's always you know, saying that you, you need to find somebody older and, you know, more mature kind of thing. And I don't really believe in that, but at the same time, I, I kind of listen to them too, and they will always say, dating a young man is not reliable. And I think, yeah, maybe that's re not reliable, but I still want to try. Yes, Moro is younger than you, right? Yes, yes, he is like five years younger than me. And... I think that's part of the reason why I named this uh, project called Experimental Relationship, because in the beginning, um, I was really not sure how long it's gonna last, because everybody um, is telling me dating a young guy is not gonna work. So I'm just the oh, let's try, see how long it lasts. So that's where the name comes from. Have you shown your work in China? Um, I've only shown my work twice. I'm very uh, selective about where I'm going to show in China because I think the main, the general public is not ready for this type of work because um, the idea is very far away from what they can understand. Um, so I only show like in one of the museums and also one of the like photo galleries. Um, and if people invite me to do, like in photo festival in China, I would always show my landscape work or some other work that's not so much about, you know, uh, this relationship. Why? What's your fear about showing the relationships in China? Um, it, it, I think it's just a lot of... Um, first of all, photography is not really viewed as serious art form in China, first of all. And then people cannot understand photography as like a conceptual photography. Um, and also like this type of relationship is also very far away from what they can appreciate. They will say, oh, this is so wrong or they are crazy or something like that. And also even like when I'm sharing my, my photos, my works, um, WeChat, and my parents would very quickly text me, oh, block my friends. I don't want them to see it. <laughs> so I think, I think they, they like my work, but at the same time, they really want to protect me from the, um, the other part of, and the other people who cannot understand my work because the, um, um, the, this very stereotype relationship and idea is so strong in China. Uh, you know, it's really interesting. Your fears, when you talk about your fears about your work being misunderstood, you're mostly talking about social pressures. Um, I have found that for this younger generation, they very rarely think about government censorship. You don't think about the government censor censoring your work. No. <laughs> no. Um, I don't know why. I think... I think our generation is different from the last generation. The last generation, maybe because, because they go through the cultural revolution and their work tends to be very political. And those are the type of work that the Chinese government really want to censor about. But our generation, because we are a single child, I think most of our work are very, are from individual um, point of views. So, 
I think it's less sensitive for them. Because it's more about personal relationships? Yeah, like about personal relationship, about personal idea, personal interest. It's not really about political things. So I think they don't really care. I mean, sometimes they care about um, nudity, but it's kind of different. You know, even if they put you in jail, it's for different reasons. You know, it won't affect that much for, I think, the younger generation. Um, one of the things that I found really interesting is you're not the only woman artist that I found was making work about gender identity. And yet when I asked them, are you feminist? And it's a lot of the work I think of as extremely feminist, like your work or Lu Yang, who has one of the videos in the exhibition, they say, absolutely not. Like, how do you relate to the word feminist? Um, I don't think of myself as a feminist, but I think I'm pro-female. Um, the reason is when I was making the work, I, I really didn't thought about feminism. and I didn't know much about it. Maybe I've, I'm feeling very similar feeling as the feminists, but my idea was just showing um, the alternative type of relationship that actually can work. And also, I don't really believe this is something I need to advocate for everybody to do the same, because I think everybody is different. So, I mean, maybe the traditional stereotype of relationship works for somebody. So I don't really think that everybody need to have the same right. You know, It's really dependent on person. That's just my opinion. All right. Which photograph did you have the most fun making? Oh, there are so many. Um, because all of these photographs, um, part of the reason is I want to make work. And part of the reason is there's something that I want to do in I want to do it, but it's just inappropriate to do in real life. So, so we just have an excuse, say, I want to do a photograph of this, you know, let's just perform. So it's kind of like become a game for me. Um, so, yeah, like a lot of pictures. Um, I think the one that was pinching his nipples, that was one of the photo I really like because that was inspired by the the classic painting of um, the two women, one woman's pinching the other's nipple in the bathtub. And also, um, yeah, like this one, I just want to see him, how he looks like in my dress because he's very skinny. Um, and I think taking photos as a photographer, I just have so much power. And I think I have more power when I'm taking pictures than in real life. So I just really enjoy doing that. What does Morrow think of all of this? He's, he's cool, is it? <laughs> um, I think Morrow, he, he's a, he has a very open mind. And he never thought about how he should act because he's male. He doesn't have any of those ideas. And when I met him, he was very young. And he just really relied on me. And whenever, whatever I ask him to do, he would just do it for me. But I think as we, we have done this for seven, eight years now, and now he understands what I'm doing more. And I think he takes it more seriously, and he particip participates more. And sometimes if I don't take a photograph for a long time, he will remind me, hey, hey, you should you should you do you should take some more pictures, you know, with with us, us together. It's kinda of become a thing we do together. Um you also are a band together, right? A mm -hmm. musical band. Um the two of you perform music together. Yes. Um because uh he's a he's a musician and he used to have a band and it just it's really suck. <laughs> So he, he quit his band. He, he was thinking he really don't like to go out to rehearse. And he, he enjoys like just staying home. And sometimes I just sing along with him. So he's, he said, let's just make a band together. So we start to have our songs. And then he will, he will prepare everything, like recording, playing instrument, arrangement. And I just 
sing and record and perform with him. I think it's kind of a way of paying back to me, uh, but paying back to him just because he he you know modeled for me in my photo project, and I really like to do music too because I I had a dream of become a rock star before <laughs> before coming to US. So I think I was you know enjoy really enjoy having a doing being a band. Do you relate to Chinese traditional culture at all? I don't know. <laughs> um, I think I, I really related to in a way that as I'm re rebelling it against it in many ways. Um, I think um, there are just many things I grew up with and the things that I never believed in. And, and after I come to US and I start to making my own work and become an artist, I just realize um, all these things that made me of me today is really because the kind of environment I grew up with that doesn't really fit me. And I wanna you know, become myself. And that's how, you know, I think that's how the Chinese tradition has influenced me. To rebel against it. Yeah. <laughs> How about uh, traditional art? Chinese traditional art? Chinese traditional art. Hmm. Well, I think really a little bit. I mean, there's, there's like inspiration for my photographs. Some of them are actually from like traditional Chinese literature. Um, like like uh, one of the photos that we are sitting in front of a gold, golden curtain and I was sitting on top of him. And that one was titled, um, The King Under Me. And that was come from um, a very famous Chinese saying about, so, um, under one people but above many other people. It's, it's talking about how, how powerful a person is maybe a queen or something is under only under one king, but it's above everybody else. So you know, there's there's like inspiration coming from this kind of knowledge that I grew up with that goes into my photos. I'm really curious. One thing that happens to me when I write about this art a lot is people say to me that they feel like Chinese art is becoming too Western. Um, if someone said that about your work, what would you say? Um, I think people say that about my work, especially I think when I meet Chinese photographers, they will say, your photo looks Amer very American or very Western. Um, I think, yeah, it is, but I, don't, I don't really don't believe in there should be a way that Chinese art should look like, or you know, Chinese photography should look like. That just doesn't make sense to me. And I don't really think there's, there should be some Western way or Eastern way of showing work. Because I am Chinese, so whatever I make, however it looks like, it is Chinese art. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm in agreement with you, but I know that this conversation comes up a lot when I'm in China. Yeah. Where people are very concerned about losing Chinese identity. I think um, it really depends on who you talk to. If you talk to some people with more traditional type of mind, they were really concerned about how, you know, these young, young kids are doing something totally different look than what Chinese tradition art look like. But if you talk to, I think the ge younger generation, they really don't care. And I think because China was closed before and through the open policy, and we are suddenly exposed to so much things outside the world, it, that just attracts us. That just, you know, our generation is really attracted to internationally, whatever is outside of China. Yes. Um, I guess we'll open it up for questions in a minute, um, but let me ask you just one more question. If you, is it important to you to be well known in China with your artwork? I would certainly hope so. 
Um, and I, th I think because having U.S., I was very rarely, so I have to really thank you for putting me into this show. I was very rarely to be labeled as a Chinese artist. Um, this is probably like the second time I've been in a show of, because I'm a Chinese artist. And I, th I think it's important, and I really wish like one day my work will be seeing more in China. I think that will make um, a positive change in, especially like in gender identities in China. Yeah, so yeah, I do really hope that one day, you know, I can show more in China. Yeah, I would like to see you in China. Yeah, that, well, I'm going to try to figure out a way to bring you to China. But I'm just not sure how my parents react to that. <laughs> yes, I definitely have found with a number of the artists here that their parents are happy that they're doing well as artists, but they do not understand the artwork at all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, recently, I, th I think um, my father, just, just a joke, my father, um, he sent me an article through WeChat. Um, about how a very talented Chinese female artist um, end up in a very poor and miserable life. <laughs> and he didn't say any comment to that. But I think what he's saying is, you know, they never, um, they are never against me of making work or making art, but I think they really worry about my future. They really wish that I can have a, just a regular day job. Instead or at least artist. be married to somebody who is uh, a businessman. Yeah, a businessman, you know. Yeah. I don't think Moro's going to cooperate with this <laughs> plan. He's a little under their expectation, but I think he's fine. <laughs> so I want to open it up to questions. Um, I'm curious what you may have about the younger generation or about Pixie's art. Um, do you have questions? Yeah. Hi, Pixie. Uh, your work is amazing. Piece, so thank you for that. Um, I have a question. I know this work deals a lot with the gender stereotypes and with the woman and the leftover woman in China. And as we know, with the one child policy, there's approximately 30 to 50 million um, excess males in China. And so I'm wondering about the shifting of, of the dynamic and the power there, perhaps back to the woman, as there's so many uh, fewer women than, than men. And with your connectivity back to China, if you feel like this, there's any change in the dialogue, if you feel like the gender stereotypes are changing or shifting at all, um, just what's the, what's the dialogue now, I'm curious. I think I grew up in Shanghai, which is a kind of a special place in China. I think um, in general, Shanghai female have much stronger power in the family than any other cities in China. But I kind of feel like these days I see so many more feminist active ac activities um, in China and they're fighting really hard. And at the same time, I feel like the government or the society is actually trying to repress that. So I think this is like a fighting moment right now in China. I mean, on the one hand, I, I think the female are begin to be aware of their position in China, but at the same time, um, the other side is trying to keep them in the same place. Yeah, um, just as a bit of information, last year, like within the last 12 months, the government arrested a group of about 10 feminists who were trying to do what we would consider pretty innocuous demonstrations uh, about things like forced abortion, and um, they were trying to stage a series of demonstrations happening simultaneously in several cities, and the government became aware of this and arrested them all, and um, one of their leaders got out in time and is in New York, and I was meeting with her, and um, so there's a way that um, a lot of the pressures to conform to gender roles is mostly social and comes from the parents, but there also is this bigger issue that's defining things right now. Uh, do you think that this body of work that we're seeing on the screen comes uh, more from the uh, dialogue in China or more from, uh, from within the youth? I think, um, I think both. 
Yeah, I think um, this work, I cannot make this work if I was still in China. You know, I would never thought about doing it or I dare not make that in China. But since I'm in the US, I think I just suddenly have the freedom to express myself and I think, you know, people don't really care what I do. <laughs> so I think it comes from me, but at the same time, it is talking about issues in China, but which cannot be done in China. And you say that the real world is a kind of a strong chance for ice strike. What kind of reaction did you get there? I, unfortunately, I wasn't um, at, at the shows when my show was in China. But I think because it's a very targeted audience, so one, one time it was like in a photo art gallery, so all the people go there are uh, gallery goers, so I think most of them understand what I'm making. And also the other time it's in the prestigious art museum, and you know, it's either like student group or you know people who go to museums, so I think they, they understand. And I think I got a lot of positive feedback from the young females um, in China. You did? Yeah, yeah. I think I, uh, when I go to shows, a lot of time it's just like the young Chinese girls are coming to me. Oh, are you pixie? And they're, I really like your work. You know, and I always get this from like these younger girls in China. Um, you're following on WeChat? I don't, because I don't. You know, WeChat is more like private, so you know people and you can just follow them. But I do have a follower on Weibo. Uh, my question is um, it seems like the majority of being an uh, artist and, uh, and this freedom of creating the art and control what you, you know, do and art is through your own creativity. And of course all the artists hope one day the, the world can recognize your talent and appreciate your work. It sounds like you have less of uh, financial or immediate uh, and pressure and of uh, being commercialized in short term. Am I interpreting that wrong, or is it? No, I think I think so because state of mind. Um, I mean both. I think the good thing about I like U.S. because there's just so many opportunities that I can have from this uh, all kinds of non-profit art art organizations like I, like grants and fundings and residence. That's what have been kept me going and making work. So I, I really appreciate that, and you know, so that I don't need to really think about what type of art to make to make money, as just to make work of what I really want to do and what I really like is in my own interest. I I don't know the answer to this, but how do you make money? Well, um, part I mean I make money half from the art support and half from. Um, commercial photography jobs. I think um, it's not a documentary photography, so we don't really do that in real life. Um, it is a lot of things that I'm making the work is about the ideas that I want to realize um, in a relationship as as an image. Um, but I think it also reflects my own relationship, and this this project has been going on for 
so many years and our relationship also changes because he's from a very young man to become a, a, a more mature man now. So our relationship also changes and it, it kind of also changes these photographs. So since one of the organizing principles of the exhibition is that all of the artists were born after 76, after the Indian Cultural Revolution, what are your thoughts about the artists who immediately preceded you, people like Shubin, Saigur, Sean, Ai Weiwei, because they also had the experience like you and Bo Wong of coming from China to New York and establishing a practice in New York. Do they have a special relevance for you, or are they just one of them? I think I, I think I like their work. Um, I think one of the common thing we have is we came outside of China and being receiving you know um, education from the Western world. So I think uh, compared to other older generation of artists, I, I really like their work, especially Zhang Huan. Um, but because I wasn't really trained. Um, as an artist before coming to the US. So I wasn't really exposed to the Chinese art world. I didn't know who was who. So when I was starting, I really don't have any influence from them at all. But now I, when I look at their work, you know, I can say I like this guy's work or that one's work. But I can see, I can definitely see an influence of Zhang Wan on your work. I would say it was a similarity because when I was making it, I actually didn't, know much about him. But I think I can definitely see it like a similarity in themes. Yeah, like a body, the using body, using body, yeah. Using the body. Yeah. Interesting. It looks like you, you, you do that on the purpose. You want to be more Japanese, in a case to be more Chinese. In some pages, we learn on with Chinese and with Japanese, and it is achieved with the hair sometimes, with the clothing, with some of the makeup maybe. So you need that to be as much clean as possible sometimes. You mean um, we, how obvious we are Chinese and Japanese in the photographs? Is it like? Do you purposely try to look like twins? Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we purposefully want to become twins. Um, especially when I, when I just met him, I had like, you know, almost the same length of short hair and we we're both Asian and just, you know, when I photograph, I, I realized when we take off our clothes, we look very similar, you know, similar skin color, similar <coughs> hair, you know. So like like the two of us, when we are lying on the bed together, I was actually really trying to make as if we are, you know, twins or, you know, it's also about the idea of the ideal relationship I would like to have is to find the other person that's so similar to me. Males were referred to females. And in the family of the child, does that play, does that have any influence on your parents, on your art, or on your gender role reversal in some of your photography? Uh, yeah, I think it's a big influence. Um, um, but in many ways, I mean, my mom told me when I was born, my, my dad was really disappointed because I'm not a boy. But I think my dad really loves me. I don't think he, he loved, I think he, he, I'm probably the, the person he loves most in the world. And I, I think, um, so I think um, as a single child, even though I'm a girl, I was really treated, you know, the best from the, from the family because I'm their only option. There's no, no son for them. Um, 
But at the same time, I, th I think I would have always been ex expected to do less. Like my parents, um, especially after I go to high school, you know, go to college, they always say, you don't need to try so hard, you know, uh, or you, you shouldn't study something that's too hard for a girl. And, and he, they say, you don't have to be so independent. That's going to be very hard for you in your life. And I really don't like that. I think that's one of the things that pushed me to just go to US, go to a foreign country to live by myself. I just want to see how, how I can end up as an individual, you know. Because I really think I don't mind working hard. I, I, don't, I, feel, I don't feel the life is hard. I, I enjoy it working by myself. I think, yeah, so that, that's probably the influence my parents gave me. One question about showing you this body of work in China, um, geopolitically because of the tension between China and Japan, do you ever think that that would inform some reactions to these words because more of Japanese? Um, I think to, to some extent it will. Um, first of all, well, really depending on who you are showing. If you're showing to people who, who understand art, um, I think they will understand it. But if you're just showing to general public, um, or if you're showing like big cities, it's okay. If you're showing to more in the middle, and people will suddenly will say they really reject this kind of um, Chinese girl married to a Japanese man type of relationship. Where they would, they would really, I think some people would be really extreme and even think you're a traitor because you're, you know, being with a Japanese man. Um, but I think my work should be okay because from the photograph, you cannot really tell he's a Japanese unless you read my artist statement. You know, there's a little bit of hint, but it's not so obvious. But, but I also think one of the things that's interesting is the amount that I've seen that Japanese culture has influenced this younger generation of Chinese artists. They are all extremely aware of artists like Murakami. They all grew up under the influence of anime and manga. And you see it in the work of Lu Yang, one of the video artists here. Um, so it's kind of interesting that there may be this political tension going on. But in terms of the younger generation, um, China is not controlling where their influences are coming from. How are you handling your relationship with your parents? You know, being apart, it's hard to get together. Are you ignoring, responding, or just how do you handle the relationship? I mean, I, I hid my relationship from my parents for a while. Um, and then when my, when my father got to know that I'm dating a Japanese, he was really worried and he had all kinds of imagination and he even drew a picture of imaginary moral, which looks like an angry, savage man. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, and then they just say, oh, um, we don't really support this kind of relationship, but as long as you're happy or you guys are in love, we are okay with that. I think there's this, their bottom line, you know, as long as I, we are in love, you know, they can accept him. But I think they still have like hopes for him for to get a job or, you know, to make some money and support me as an artist, you know. <laughs> Talk about your approach to life, wanting to be independent and work hard, and that happened before you became an artist. That was just your approach to life, correct? Yes. And I'm just wondering, is that representative of other people you knew growing up, or uh, was that exceptional? You mean I was influenced by or inspired by some other people when I grew up? Now, did you find that other people your age also wanted to be independent? I think I think a lot of people are trying to be individual. Like 
Well, I can say like um, Bo Wang, the the Chinese artist who came for the opening, who did the video work and the the landscape. Um, he was trained. He he was in a very prestigious university in China, Tsinghua Daxue, and he was his major was for, uh, physics. 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 He was supposed to become like a scientist or you know uh, working some financial firm or something, and he also just you know, changed his career after coming to the U.S. and just start to do what he wanted to do. Um, and also, yeah, I think a lot, of, a lot of our young artists, if you're really looking at what they're doing, it, it is not some, some, something that the parents would teach you to do. Like, they would prevent you from doing this kind of work. Um, I definitely have found that if there's one characteristic that I can generalize about all the artists, it's about the desire to be individuals. Like I think going through the exhibition, and of course this is a small sampling of artists, you don't see one trend or one way they're all working. They each are working in their own individual way. That's from a small group I was trying to convey what I saw on a large scale there this idea about being an individual, this is like a whole new thing in China, this um, drive in this younger generation to be individuals rather than necessarily be part of a family unit or be part of a work unit or even with the older generation of artists, they often wanted to be seen together. Now the artists want to be seen as individual artists, not even as Chinese artists, but as known as individuals. After Memphis, why did you choose New York instead of someplace else? Uh, it's really about traffic. I hate driving. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and also, it's, it's so much convenient to get Asian food in New York. That, that just, you know, it's really for living convenience. Okay, can we do one last question? And then uh, they'll still be here, so you can come up afterwards with more. Go ahead, Michelle. Um, after this series, what will be your next um, I'm, I'm really interested in the female experience, like living in the society as a female, and also interested in like, uh, a female leadership, and also, also I'm interested in like, the, the kind of um, the aesthetics of male body in a more feminism, feminist way. Well, I guess just very random things. I can't wait to see it. Please join me in thanking Pixie and Barbara for coming down. <laughs>